There's no chat. Oh, there it is. Hi, chat. Perfectly on time, as always. As always. Don't say wild. I'm on time. I'm Mr. Fucking on time. Sir, dude. Sir. Mr. Go Live, Mr. On Time, Mr. Here to Stay, Mr. Don't Skip a Day, Mr. Never Double Dates. Let's go. Mr. Keeps that motherfucking thing on him. Marth 58. Thanks for the 34 months. Summary day for the seven months. Hey, did you know your shirt re represents a defunct and corrupt company? No, wait, what? Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Lehman Brothers? I think not, sir. An American institution, okay? They helped people get housing loans. How could they be corrupt? You fucking idiot. You've obviously got it mistaken. You've obviously, you've obviously got it mistaken. How else could average people get loans to afford a house in 2006? If it wasn't for the good folks at Lehman Brothers. Where the party go? <laughs> Next, he'll tell me FTX is bad. Uh, yeah, they made crypto accessible to everyone. Yeah, okay. I think you're the one that's wrong here, buddy. They have a 21 months. First time chatter. Oh, I love this question. Yo, if you have debt, should you be investing in a retirement fund or pay off debt first? I guess it depends on the percentage interest rate of your debt, sir. But generally, paying down debt is going to help you out a lot more than trying to invest in something. Boom. Question answered. Fuck. Fuck. That's a sour ass blueberry. Ah. Oh. Oh. Yo, H-Rock, did you see the Indian election results around today? The Nifty 50 is booming as the ruling party is winning. Um, nobody in the world was under the impression that Modi wouldn't win this election. So I, I don't think it's a big surprise. Um, that it was completely locked. It was locked. Uh, but yes, I as an owner of the Nifty 50, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, do you have a Yada at? Am I getting, what is a Yada? Yada, these nuts? What are you doing? <laughs> you trying to catch me in something? I don't know what the fuck Yada is. A Yada ad? What are you trying to, don't, no. Um, actually, I gotta put Mexican watch in here. Have you seen about how Canada just borrowed $30 billion to buy housing mortgages? Good job, Canada. That'll work. Good idea. Keep the bubble afloat. Love to see that. Um, oh, the new CoffeeZilla topic is Yada the YouTuber bank. No, I don't know about that, but I will watch the CoffeeZilla after marketing Monday for sure. Um, hey, a truck, I'm fledgling new landlord, but I've been getting stiffed on tips. I need to put the timer up. The not cosmetic timer. Where is it? Uh, boom, bada boom, 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 boom. There's the timer. There's this. Perfect. Perfect. The very real, very not cosmetic timer. We'll put it down here. Um, You've been getting stiffed on tips recently and you want to get an iPad to make it easier for your tenant. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a really good idea. The thing is, I think a lot of us will agree as tenants, we want to tip our landlords. Sometimes we forget because it's not so easy. It's not apparent. You know, you send in the check, but it's like, where do I, where do I get the tip separately? So, you know, it's just for you. 
And so I think an iPad installed in your unit um, would be great. Would be great. Or even, you know, I mean, I'm not even, I'm just thinking out loud here. You could put new locks on all their doors that only open when you swipe your card. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a little, just a little tiny bonus. Unlock the door, get inside. That's like a good way. That they can make it a regular thing. Um, now he's thinking. <laughs> uh, I pick up extra shifts so just so I can tip my guy. True hero. True hero. Doing your part. Doing your part. Did you watch the Norway chess round seven? Is that the most recent Gotham chess video? Has he done it yet? I only watch through Gotham chess and I only watch when he puts 40 exhibition points and Magnus Carlsen in the title. <laughs> if he doesn't have 40 exclamation points and Magnus Carlsen, I skip. So if it's one of those, then I've seen it. Um, one NDT. Thank you for the 10 gifties. Very much appreciated. What about Tyler one? I didn't watch Tyler one. Only Magnus. Um, that's who man who loves the sport right there. <laughs> The true sport. Yes, I'm a true sportsman of chess. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait. <laughs> Have you heard the new Drake song? Oh, can we talk about that? We got time before Marketing Monday. Jeez Louise. New Drake song. Where is it? New Drake. Uh, Where is it, dude? Here it is. Wagwan Delilah, no, I'm late because. <laughs> it's Wagwan Delilah. That's. <laughs> it's literally a hey there, Delilah, like a patois accent. It's, this is real. There's bear traffic. I just showed my dog your Grammy. Said he knows a man I slapped it. I'm so cheesed. Your madam was a night's arcade. I'm <laughs> Is it AI? Is it AI? Oh, okay. If it's AI, that makes so much more sense. I mean, it's rap TV. It has to be fake, right? Is it? It's not AI or it is? Damn, this one is the one I'm first fooled on. It's real been confirmed. Now let's find out. Let's just get to the bottom of it. It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. <laughs> it's fake, dude. It's one hundred percent fake. It's fake because no, it's fake. Um, Drake started outsourcing his Ghost Riders. No. Uh, read the title. When are we getting our food? What food? What food are you talking about? Uh, maybe Drake is an AI. Warren, oh, oh buffet. <laughs> Warren buffet. You thought, and what did you think the Warren was? What did you think the Warren was? You didn't think there was possibly a name. You, you thought for sure that throw the Warren out. It's a rabbit buffet. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It's some type of meat. Yeah, you're right. No, we're doing that. We're doing a, a rabbit buffet. You're eating a bunch of roasted rabbit straight from the Warren. Uh, hey. Oh, my God. I can finally say. Yeah, you said it. Um, yo, HR, I'm watching from the Shinkansen in Japan. Have fun. That's cool. Uh, I am eternally jealous of Japanese trains. There's no reason that a country that is as uh, equally at the best financially mismanaged as Japan is should be able to have great public transit while we in America waste away with fucking roads. Um, Big A, why were you watching Squeaks today? Care to explain? I, you caught me. I was there on January 6th, all right? And I have since then followed the cult leader who organized the whole thing, 
squeaks ever since. I've been hiding underground. Um, but that is the truth. I was there. We stormed the Capitol. He riled everybody up. No, honestly, I was only him for a little bit. I dropped the prime. And then he said, <laughs> I thought you owned NVIDIA stock only a prime. <laughs> That's what he said, which is kind of fucked up. All right. As I'm bringing, I, I just tossed the prime in there. Uh, when I told my wife that Brandon Sanderson has a law team, she thought I was talking about you. Are you telling me that Brandon Sanderson has a, has a law team? The, the author? Eight hours ago, Brandon Sanderson enters League of Legends esports. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Brandon Sanderson is partnering with an NACL team. Um. Uh, oh, it's college. It's college. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, it's not that it's, it's not, it's fine. It's cool. I, it's cool. You know, but what I thought it was, was him putting millions of dollars. Like, you know what Rick Fox did when he bought Echo Fox? <laughs> um, I thought it was like, he was going to put millions of dollars up in esports venture, which is dumb, which is stupid, but he's just, he just wants to be involved in a team. That's fun. Um, Echo Fox M2K. You, uh, uh, is there a picture that exists? This is one of the greatest um, crossovers in history. Is just, I wish I could find a picture. It's, you guys aren't going to know, probably, but. Um, damn, I'll never find it. It's Rick Fox and Mewtwo King, like, awkwardly hugging. <laughs> If anyone can find this, it is basketball legend Rick Fox hanging out with, you know, nerdiest dude in the world, Mewtwo King, and they're like doing a hug, and it's it's just really fun, because I can't imagine what they talked about. I've also had conversations with Mewtwo King. He he's very focused on a very few subjects that he wants to talk about. Um. I remember I when I first met if you guys don't know Mewtwo King is um, he is a good guy but I'm not I'm not sure that Mewtwo King in any way but Mewtwo King you know you might know him from this iconic meme <laughs> this is the iconic this photo went more viral than his whole I mean he's one of the best play, male players of all time but this photo went more viral anyway Mewtwo King uh, one of the greatest Smash players of all time one of the first truly dominant players. Um, he, uh, he, I first met him when I started at Twitch and I was working at, this must have been like an MLG or something. Yeah, I think it was MLG Anaheim or something. All right. And I introduced myself and I say, hey, and I'm like, you know, we're trying to get more um Twitch, uh, no, a Smash players to broadcast on Twitch and start like streaming and maybe you'd consider it. And he was like, he's like, wait, I have an idea that's going to make you and your bosses a lot of money. <laughs> that's how he opened it. By the way, I'm like a brand new hire to Twitch. I'm 21 years old. He's like, take this to your bosses. It's going to make you and your bosses a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, well, sure. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm listening. He goes, I have a connection. It was the guy that was running his like scam esports org. And he was like, this guy is going to get Melee broadcasts on TV in Brazil. Okay? You guys need to put money into this. He's going to put Melee on TV in Brazil. And I, I pause. <laughs> Again, I'm a Mewtwo King fan, by the way. I'm a fan at the time and still am. But especially at the time, I was a big Mewtwo King fan. I pause and I go, okay, I, I work for Twitch. Um... If they're watching it on TV in Brazil, then they're not watching it on Twitch. <laughs> he just pauses. He just, <laughs> he just, like his brain breaks. He just doesn't say a word for like 30 seconds. 
<laughs> and then and he goes, well, yeah, you understand. It's, it's, it'll work. No, and then he, okay, but they just move on. I'm like, oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure it out. But that, uh, true story. This was uh, MLG Anaheim, Music King's pitch. Uh, yeah, it was most valuable gaming, right? MVG, that was their, yeah, I don't know. Um, Big A, this video gives the same energy as that picture. What video is this? Oui. Kiss cam gone wrong. I don't. These always make me cringe, bro. You know, they, they uh, this is gonna be cringe. Sure. They certainly haven't been as explosive. Right. As I, I don't want to see this. Could possibly be. Haven't gotten quite as much production from the running back position as I thought that they would have coming into the year. You know, against Miami, it seemed like they were pretty predictable running. <laughs> 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 why why <laughs> she was giving him the eye flutter and everything too he wasn't feeling it he wasn't feeling it um i was fake who knows dude who fucking knows who knows in this crazy if wagwan delilah is fake what can we trust if drake finally put out a true heartful you know heartfelt soulful song wagwan delilah that we could all rally behind if that's fake, my God, I can't even, I can't even, I don't even understand. Next year, you're going to tell me Grippy was fake. The greatest verse of all time. Would you ever do a stream where you try to balance the U.S. budget? Yes, but I would cut all, um help to the poor and I would give it all to the military. So it would be controversial. Um, I would cut education. I would cut social spending. I would cut uh, roads, <laughs> schools, hospitals, and I would get just one gigantic like Avengers level um flying aircraft carrier thing that we could just give Raytheon an ungodly amount of money to build and like 40 years 40 years and two trillion dollars um <laughs> and I would invest in Raytheon before I did it just so I could really time the market um I hate Shrek out here personally cutting break lines. That's not what I said. I'm not personally cutting break lines. I, um, why not inve <laughs> invest the $2 trillion in the nifty 50? Yeah, I think if a president came in and said, I am so not confident in America that I'm going to take all of our money and invest it in India, I think that would be a bad look. <laughs> I think that would... I think that might reflect poorly on their candidacy if they were to put trillions of dollars into India rather than finding anything in America they could invest in. Uh, huge gains. Yes, I guess. I guess it would be huge gains. Um, have you ever had to deal with workers' comp because the middlemen companies are insane? I have not had to deal with workers' comp. I tried to file a claim that my fingies hurt at NVIDIA from typing too much, and it was not um, received well. However, if you are telling me that trying to get um, money uh, for owed, <laughs> money that a corporation owes you that they can drag their feet on is hard to do, I am not surprised. Anything related to healthcare, anything related to Injury, anything or legal liability seems very difficult to get your money out. Um, I'm more into workers casual, but I can see the appeal of a competitive environment. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a little blueberry in my teeth. Very funny. Um, ain't no insurance covering those fingers, bro. <laughs> very good. Very nice. Happy to be here in June. Happy to be here in June. Different time, different era for sure. 
Yo, HR, I got any tips for a no base all commission position? That means they are paying you no salary and only a percentage of what you what you bring in. You're like an Amazon warrior, okay? You hunt what you kill. You earn what you kill. <laughs> Today was my first day of training. Hope you got the run pass. I got to be honest with you. It sounds a bit like a scam. Um, a, a no base all commission position. I'm not saying it. It a hundred percent is, um, but it does. It feels like it is. It feels. To me, my gut would tell me this is like one of those entry level, like all sales jobs where they get all the upside. I mean, you know, like for example, um, a MLM or like a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. Those are also like no base, all commission where in fact, there's less than it's negative base because you pay for the products. Then you sell the boxes to other people and then you're getting a cut of that. It's uh when do you think of the gifties? Um, are we going to get gay Enron merch for June? Could also use some trans Enron merch. This is a smart idea. <laughs> is, that, is that a smart idea? That's going to, that's going to really move the needle for pride. If we had somehow like a gay Enron logo. <laughs> interesting i do think man have you guys seen the um what is it uh no it's lockheed martin i'll actually have to do this topic next next week uh where is it yeah <laughs> i can't find the exact thing but just lockheed martin pride is so funny <laughs> It's like, damn, this is truly based. You know what I'm saying? Wow, really doing your part to <laughs> make and sell jets and missiles. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the socks. Wait, yeah, Lockheed Martin Pride socks. Where are those? These are the best. These are the best, dude. I unironically need a pair of these bad boys for the court. Um. Yo, Atriac, my friend lost his genuine Lehman Brothers tote at a party, and the hosts don't want to look for it. How do we convince them that recovering it should be the top of their priority list? That doesn't sound like a sounds like a problem with your friends, <laughs> regardless of item. You, you ask them and they just said they don't want to look for it <laughs> because you inter how weird that is. You know how weird that is? Like if I, I've never heard of someone not at least just lying. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Of being like, oh yeah, I'll check. I'll look around. Didn't see it. Actually, I, I just secretly recall this. This happened with fucking Ludwig. This happened with fucking Ludwig where I left something at his house, his old house. And it was back when I lived in uh, NorCal and I had to drive like six hours down to where they lived. Like if everyone, I only visit very occasionally. And I left something there and I messaged him like the next day after I was back up in Nor I was like, hey, I think I left something down there. Can you check for it? And he's like, yeah, I'll check. And then I messaged him like a month later. Hey, just reminding you, I, I think I'm confident I left that thing there. Can you check? And he goes, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll check. <laughs> and then like months later, uh, he told me he, he couldn't find it. He told me, I, I finally checked. I'm like, hey, can you check it? I, you can find it. It's not there. I come. It's exactly where I said it would be. Like the next time I'm there, which is months later. It's exactly where I said it would be. It hasn't moved. It's been there the whole time. It's basically in plain view. He hasn't looked once. He didn't even check the one spot. He actually... <laughs> he actually just fucking lied. Uh, <clears throat> so it's fucked up. It's fucked up, all right? Did you see the, the gay cod skins? You can put a pride flag on your bullets. Base. Moving the needle. Moving the needle here. Um, hey, Itchrock. Have you already spoken about the new NVIDIA chips? I'm up 30%. I think I spoke about it a while ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did the whole presentation. Unlike the new refresh. 
Um, I'm out. I I, I have sold at uh, 11.50. Um, though I I think it will rise somewhat above that in the ensuing mania, but I have no idea. And uh, oh, dude, actually, wait, can I show you this? Uh, this again, there's not an analog, but I, it's just something that you might find interesting. You might find interesting, okay? Um, September 2000, right around here is when Cisco <laughs> did their 10 to 1, I think it was 20 to 1 actually, stock split. Uh, there was a big mania around them splitting the stock, so it was easier to get into. Right around here <laughs> is when they did their stock split, and then... <laughs> And uh, NVIDIA has a big 10 to 1 stock click on that everyone's bubbling into. Um, there's a similar analog, you know? Uh, Ruben architecture, they're going to stack the memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there were extenuating circumstances. Uh, no, 2001, there's so many circumstances. This is 2000. Um, hey, Atrock, got the opportunity to work with a higher up in my company and eventually share their position, but they basically ignore me. What is a stock split? A stock split is, um, let's say, a, a, a one share of a company costs a thousand dollars, and they are they're worried that it makes it hard for average investors to buy a couple of shares and be a part of the process. So they might um, split it, let's say, uh, five to one. So that means everybody that owns one share, it they get five shares. It, it five x's, but the value of each share goes down one fifth. So nobody's amount changes. So if I have 10 shares, I might now have 50 shares, but they're worth the same as 10 was before. I, I have an increase or decrease in value. All it does is make one share now cost 20, so everyone can buy it. That's the idea. Because especially when stock splitting was more common was that you couldn't buy fractional shares. You could only buy one share at a time. Um, like a lot of people today have fractional shares, but you technically can. Um, that's what uh, stock splitting is. And what's very funny about it is... My first experience with it was with NVIDIA where I had, um, you know, I had a few thousand shares or whatever, and um, they did a four to one stock split and the, the, my, my bank didn't update the price to be one fourth, but did update the amount to be four X. <laughs> so I checked my bank one day and I, it was like, Everything was up 400%. <laughs> and I remember I screamed, Ari! Ari, get in here! We're rich! <laughs> I, had, I didn't even, like, I didn't verify, I didn't even think. I was just on this huge fucking green line. It, like, went straight up. And, the, you know, the, the raw number was, like, fucking huge. And, <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute. This is exactly, this is, so, this is exactly Four times as much money. <laughs> and then I uh, and then I had to look at it. But uh, uh, I figured it out later. And then the next day they updated it. Big A, I got invited to a corporate golf tournament and I'm playing in it. In the tournament, every beer you drink is one shot off your score. Do I try to win or do I really try to win? Every beer you drink is one shot off your score. Can you game it? Theoretically, you could drink like 50 beers at the end, right? <laughs> then you're going to get like holes in one on everything. <laughs> the thing is, if you, if you get wasted early, you're going to take so many shots that it won't work. But if you like play your best game, then on the last hole, you just fucking slam every beer you can. You could actually get a near perfect score. Um, doo -doo. if it's per hole, it's a different story. I don't know how, I don't know how to optimize that. I actually don't know how to optimize that. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how bad you get when you start drinking. Uh, you could also, I mean, you really want to win. Yeah. You really want to win. Here's what you do. Okay. You get it till you're at putting distance. You know, get it as close as you fucking can to the hole. Then you drink till it's down to a hole in one. Make the easy putt, even though you're drunk. It's fine. Then throw up immediately. <laughs> walk out, 
Walk out into the rough. Vomit everywhere. Purge. Boot and rally for hole two. Do the exact same thing. Leave a trail of vomit all across all 18 holes. Everyone hates you. But you come out with a clutch victory in this for fun corporate tournament. <laughs> it's genius. It's fucking genius. Um, smash cut to doctor's office. You have esophageal cancer. <laughs> yeah, well, they do accept um, corporate golf trophies in American healthcare systems. So you'll be covered. Um, Big A, have you heard of scrometing? No, I have never heard of scrometing. I have no fucking idea. What do you think about the Rocket Lab stock? I don't know what that is. You have to give me more context, sir. More context. Uh. Bro don't know about scream vomiting. Have you thought about getting a man bun? It would make me respect your expertise more. I think that would do negative effects for me. I don't think a man bun would be a good idea. I don't think a man bun is good. Daffodos! Daffodos! Thank you for the five months. Appreciate it. Let me make sure that I've got everything I need here, ladies and gentlemen, for a marketing Monday. That's a new song that will be introing um, today's show that I'm working on. Yes, yes, yes. It all looks good to me. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It all looks good to me. Marketing Monday. It's truly a wonder. Marketing Monday. It's truly a fun Good time. <laughs> this is a funny slide. Um, do you guys think I should take this streaming thing on? No, sorry, not streaming. The singing thing on the road. Any of you think that I should try to travel the country doing performing tours of my voice? Kind of like try to sell out arenas or something. Like if I were to take all of my um, new windfall of cash and rent out like, I don't know, crypto arena, Staples Center or whatever. And like just do the whole fucking thing and try to sell tickets for my singing. Do you think that would be a, a good idea or no? You'd make it big? Great. Um... Madison Square Garden? Okay, perfect. You absolutely would sell out every time. <laughs> would sell more than Taylor Swift. <laughs> You'll be the Taylor Swift for China. I believe Taylor Swift is the Taylor Swift in China. They, they are big fans. You could fill... Oh, dude! Oh, should I include this in Marketing Monday? Wait, could I make a three-part slide right now? It's actually so funny. Or is this a pre... You know what? This will be an exclusive. Throw it on the Clips channel somehow. Throw it on the Clips channel. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't know, J-Lo, Jennifer Lo uh, Lopez. Um, yeah, this is really funny. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you. I'll just give you... I'll do it right now. This is like Pretend it's a Marketing Monday. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Lopez had a tour called This Is Me Now, the tour. This is a global um, concert tour for her new album, This Is Me Now, okay? This was the idea. Unfortunately, her new album wasn't very popular. So they sold almost no tickets to this tour. This is a bad, bad look, right? Because you've already booked all the venues. It's bad. So she's kind of freaking out. Her and her team are freaking out. So they hard pivot and they go to this. And now it's J-Lo Live, the greatest hits. It's rebranded everything. They rebranded all the merch, all everything to be like, okay, it's a greatest hits tour because now we don't have to do 
uh, you know, the new songs. It, this is me is still briefly mentioned, but it's all the greatest hits. That sort of helps ticket sales, but really not at all. Because after, <laughs> after, you know, a few weeks of pushing this, they realize, oh, wait, we still haven't sold enough tickets. So as of like three days ago, the entire tour was canceled. Uh, yeah. Cancels. Rumors of poor ticket sales. Um, who is she? You don't know J-Lo? You don't know Jenny from the block? Again, I think part of it, though, was that it was, um, I mean, extra massive arenas they were picking. Uh, because she definitely has fans and she definitely has some bangers, but. Um, yeah, I think it was more this. They tried filling the massive arena and not like normal sized concert halls. And so, you know, if you don't fill the whole thing, it's, um, easy colors. Think of the prime. Is she the girl from the dung Kings ad? Bro, that's, that can't be what you know her for. <laughs> that cannot be the dung Kings ad. The fucking two seconds in Dung Kings. This. Um, she said she canceled to spend time with family. That is the standard thing they say. <laughs> they don't say, hey, yeah, I couldn't sell any tickets. So it's no one's ever said that. Um, did it? So many artists are doing arenas and struggling to fill them right now. Well, the thing is, I mean, Spotify does. I mean, another marketing winner fail here is that uh, the Spotify CEO said uh, <laughs> he was talking about how great his business is. He was like, yeah, our cost of creating content is close to zero. <laughs> it's like, yeah, for you, it's nothing. You just take the music and pay them almost nothing, dude. Yeah, we get it. Uh, well, good for you. Record profits. But, like, they don't actually make... By the way, this is the guy that Hotshot GG outbid for a house. But not for head size, I'll tell you that. Um, but, yes. And so, artists are now touring as much as possible and trying to sell as many tickets as possible because touring is where they make most of their money. Touring is where the artist gets a much higher percent than in the actual uh, uh, digital playing of the song. And so that's why they're kind of overbooking themselves at these arenas and not filling them out. It's also why you might see like more um, special edition albums, more like autograph experiences, more like all these are ways to like for the artist to monetize uh, or, you know, merch sales or vinyls. All, all that stuff is because... Um, the you know there's no more record sales and Spotify doesn't pay very much. Um, how are you the CEO of the largest music streaming service, but not clue how the music industry works? I mean, he he knows how it works. It's just working in his favor. <laughs> it's more like his comments were right for the audience he was talking to. He just didn't think they would be out of context. Um, Spotify's doing quite well. Uh, what did you think of the gifties? Thank you for the gifties. Very much appreciated. Uh, all right. Let me let me do one last run through. Give me give me two minutes just to make sure I got all these slides in order. Uh, a lot of interesting stories today that are fun to talk about. Bada bing, bada boom. And yet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, everything looks good. This is great. Bada bing, bada boom. Just making sure. Just making sure one more time. Thinking, just, you know, talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> just, 
Just talk amongst yourselves for a second. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, just making sure that I've got this stuff all locked in and you guys are fucking not giving me the chance. Um ba da ba da ba da um bum bum ba bum 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 Okay Um <laughs> that's so funny you guys say awkward Aukies <laughs> like I'm not asking much of you here. I'm just asking you to make small talk with people that have probably similar interests to you across the world. It's not it's not difficult. It's not difficult. You should be able to do it. This is like the least pressure environment you'll ever have to do it in. How do you do it in real life? Do you say Aukies? If you <laughs> like if you're ever in a situation where you have to talk to somebody you don't know, do you go, um, awkward? This is Aukies. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the camera like Jim. <laughs> Someone goes, hey, pleased to meet you. You go. <laughs> that's that's stupid. That's a bad way to live your life. It's not difficult. Um, what <laughs> I picture you. This is how I picture you guys. You guys get into an Uber to be driven to, I don't know, Safeway to pick up a late night bag of Totino's pizza rolls. And then the Uber driver goes, hey, how's your night going? And then you, <laughs> you fucking clam up. Don't say a word. Look at the floor. Stare at your phone. And then when you get out, you give a one star review for talking. <laughs> That's what that's the fucking vibe that I'm getting, bro. Just say hi. Talk too much. <laughs> I'm full on anime pilled. Oh, I thought you said Eamon pilled. It was much funnier to me that I thought you said I'm anime pilled. I talked the Uber driver's ear off. Cause I had so funny to imagine a driver getting pissed that you're talking too much about anime. <laughs> So anyway, do my tech on Titan because the new arc is crazy. You watch One Piece? Because I have a lot to say about... Um, did you hear Wagwan Delilah by Drake? Unfortunately, Ray oh man, we found out it's not real. It's a true tragedy because I really, really wanted it to be real. I thought if we had Grippy into Wagwan Delilah, we would have had truly the greatest rap summer of all time. But unfortunately, it's fake. Um, unfortunately, it's fake. Marketing Monday in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 7, 7, 7. One more check. Make sure we got everything. 7, 7. Oh, I did want to add. Wait, 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 wait. You motherfuckers, wait. Okay, this will take me exactly, and I mean exactly, one minute. And it'll be funnier, so I'm going to include it. All I have to do... It's the rule of threes, okay? Right now, I have it as one, and it will instead be a rule of threes, okay? Does any among you know off the top of your head what a six pack of Bud Light costs? Six pack Bud Light, what does that cost? Sounds like it's like nine bucks. The vibe I'm getting is nine bucks. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What about last one? Last one. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Do you guys know what one Methuselah, which is six liter, of Dom Perignon Rosé cost? <laughs> what is a Methuselah? What is it? Oh, I found out what it costs. Costs, uh, costs four. Oh, I think it costs something like $1,600. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, good. That's a, that's all I needed. That's all I needed from you. That's all I needed from you. Okay. Was that so hard? Did you really have to cry about it? No, you didn't. Okay. Um. So quit your whining. Quit your yapping. Last thing I need to know. One more thing. I'm so sorry. Uh is just what it might cost to get, there it is, thank you very much, a, this is just the last thing, bro, and you guys are like freaking out, you're freaking out, and it's putting me on edge, to be honest, because you just can't um, cool your jets, there, it's done, 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 okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, five, oh, never mind, sorry, five, Four, three. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid, Pookie. Uh, zero. Thank you for the raid. Wait, which? I'm sorry. Who raided me? <laughs> squeaks. Oh, squeaks with the raid. Wait. So squeaks, squeaksers, as you're called. Um, I came into Squeaks's channel earlier to stop in and tell some jokes and say hi. And you guys bullied me into subbing. I just chat the chat message. What was he talking about? He was talking about how, I don't remember. I don't honestly remember. It was being bald or some shit, dude. And you guys just said unsubbed, no check mark, unsubbed, no check mark. And so I subbed. So I was like, fuck it, I'll sub. So I drop a prime and then Squeaks calls me out on stream and says, oh, I thought you had Nvidia stock. <laughs> just a prime? Which is fucking bullying. That's I'm trying to support your content, and you don't even fucking. It's bullying, dude. I got I got bullied. I got bullied, and so obviously I sent him a tier three. <laughs> obviously I tipped. Obviously I wanted the attention, so I made a Reddit post as well. Okay. Uh. <laughs> you only you only have one. I only have one prime. It actually means a lot to give it to. Squeaks. Oh, he was talking about, wait, before we get into it, because he was talking about something interesting, which was um, how people nowadays, he was talking about in the context of streamers where like people really care about like streamers thumbnail meta and like what type of content they're doing and how they're angling their business. And it's like, either you like it or you don't just watch. And we were comparing it to the idea of like, so many people nowadays care about the sales they care about like, it's like people complaining about whether or not PS5 or Xbox sells more. It's like, either you like the fucking console or you don't, you like the games or you don't. Why do you, why is it important to argue about whether or not this one sells more? Or it's about like, you know, I think compared to nowadays than, than previous times, people really care about sports stars deals. Like before you'd be like, I'm a fan of the Lakers, but now you're like, I know the Lakers cap space. <laughs> I know like how much they have to sign a Supermax contract. I know. I think that is an interesting. Don't fucking yap at me. Don't yap. Or the Otani deal. Yes. So I thought it's interesting. However, without further ado, I need you to look at this screen. I need you to analyze it with your eyes. And when you see yourself, say me. Because it's time for marketing. Ladies and... Oh, shit. <laughs> Ladies 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marketing Monday, Wins and Fails, the show where we go over all of the wins and the fails in the last week in marketing and business. I'd like to introduce you to a new sweet old man in the Marketing Monday lore, and that is Warren Buffett. Are you aware of this man, Warren Buffett? He is currently on the real-time billionaires list, the seventh richest person in the entire world, or at least he was until today. Now, he is poor in Buffett. <laughs> He's broke. He is broke as a joke, dude. But let me give you a little backstory. <laughs> let me give you a little backstory on Warren Buffett and how he got to here before we talk about what happened today. So this is Berkshire Hathaway. It is a nondescript big lump of a gray building in Omaha, Nebraska. And this is where all of his wealth comes from. And you might be thinking, what? I'm sure many of you don't know what Berkshire Hathaway actually does or why it's one of the most valuable companies in the world. But this is Berkshire Hathaway. It started out as a textile manufacturing company, basically a cotton plant. Um, oh, sorry. Cotton plant back in the 1800s. I mean, it's extremely old. Uh, and it lasted for a while as a mostly failing business until the late 1950s and 60s when Warren Buffett bought in. A younger Warren Buffett, if you can believe it, bought in. And he didn't like the business. He was a small investor. He owned some shares. And he decided he wanted to get out of Berkshire Hathaway. He's like, this business sucks. I don't want to be a part of it. So they made him an offer to buy out all of his shares for $11.50 a share. He said, fine, deal. I'll wash my hands of it. I won't be involved. They shook hands. Then a day later, they sent over the offer, the contract, and they had written 1135 instead of 1150. Slightly less. Not too much. He wouldn't, I mean, it's, they just kind of undercut him a little bit per share. He freaked out. <laughs> a young Warren Buffett freaked out and said, you're trying to cheat me. You're trying to scam me. So instead of selling shares, he bought all the rest of the shares and fired the CEO. <laughs> this is a true story. I learned this from Warren Buffett's biography. Uh, he fired the CEO and now he owned, you know, it was a cool flex, don't get me wrong, but now he's left owning a failing textile manufacturer. What the hell is he going to do with this? So instead, he scrapped all the actual business this does. No more textile manufacturing. And instead, it just became a holding company to buy shares of other companies. That's what Berkshire Hathaway is. So this gray office building, all it does is sit there with some staff and own shares in other businesses. And slowly but surely, he started to buy bits of successful American businesses. First a little bit and then all of Geico, a little bit and then all of Duracell, a little bit and then all of Dairy Queen, all of Kraft Heinz, which includes Kool-Aid, Capri Sun, Oscar Mayer, Heinz, Jell-O, Lunchables, etc. Eventually, as of today, the largest holdings are like 10% of Bank of, he has, you know, not 10%, they have a, a big chunk of Bank of America, a big chunk of Apple, Coca-Cola, Chevron, American. This company is a holding company for bits and pieces of all these classic American companies that you know. And due to his management and picking the right businesses, buying low and selling high, Berkshire Hathaway has gone from being worth $19 a share in 1964 to actually, this is higher than this, $600,000 today per share. It has been one of the greatest appreciating companies of all time, and his large ownership of it has made him one of those wealthy people on earth. If you'd invested a little bit in, in Berkshire Hathaway a long time ago, you would be a millionaire now, and many people are after having put their money with him. However, today, all of that changed when, uh, for some reason, the $660,000 per share of Berkshire Hathaway crashed 99.9% .9 to $185 a share. <laughs> The largest flash crash in American stock market history. 99.9% .9 crash in one day, immediate drop. Um, I'm sure many people who held their savings in this company had an actual heart attack if they checked and saw this. However, it was a glitch. <laughs> it was a glitch. The, the New York Stock Exchange rolled out some new software that was ironically designed to stop exactly this. It was designed to stop flash crashes by including better limit up, limit down halts, which basically means if a stock is moving too fast up or too fast down, it halts trading for a bit to make sure everything gets figured out so it can't be like panic movements. 
Anyway, they rolled this out, and instead of halting it, it like flash crashed 10 major stocks. <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway being the most important, but also like gold and a few other major ones uh, were overnight appearing to be worthless. Now, obviously, this opportunity seemed incredible, too good to pass up. This is the most valuable company, one of the most valuable companies in the world. And so people all over social media were like, wait a minute, I can buy a $600,000 stock at sub $200? And they started putting in orders to start buying shares at this discounted price because they knew, assuming it gets fixed, it's like the biggest gain of all time. <laughs> so they put in their short order and it did indeed get fixed. Some people put in orders. They got their shares filled by automated traders and it bounced back to 630000 which means on paper they made at minimum, uh, you know, a few hundred grand in a day. There was some bad news. Unfortunately for these mini Warren Buffetts, uh, if you tried to buy the dip, there was some bad news, which is that the New York Stock Exchange decided that was not really a fair trade <laughs> to buy a $600,000 stock for 150 bucks. And they unwound the trades. They rolled it all back. And the 99% gain was not... Uh, <laughs> was not possible. Unfortunate. You know, Warren Buffett gets, the, that's exactly how he made his money, I'm sure. And now we can't do the same thing. Uh, Edward Snowden, for some reason, chimed in and said, Bitcoin fixes this. <laughs> I mean, the stock market fixed it in a day. I don't know that Bitcoin's involved. And like many of you are saying, Dizzy B voiced the voice of the people and said, it's all rigged. I tried to buy a share and it was denied. Once again, the powers that be will stay in control. God damn it, dude. God damn it. If I can't take advantage of a one small glitch to get life-changing money, this system is rigged. Uh, and speaking of the system being rigged, another major stock market story took place uh, today. And that is the return of Keith Gill, a.k.a. Roaring Kitty, again, again. <laughs> Not just once, but twice this month, Roaring Kitty has come back again to make GameStop meme a thing again. So we talked about this a few weeks ago when this spike happened. He came back. He posted the meme on Twitter of this. Okay, the guy leaning forward. The stock spiked. People were in the mania. The stock immediately went back down to normal. It was like immediately starting to crash. And then this part happened which is that last night he posted on Reddit r slash super stonk his YOLO update, revealing that he was still very much involved in buying GameStop securities and that in fact had a what, $175 million position. Now I want to be clear that when Roaring Kitty here rode off into the sunset back in 2021, he left after the whole GameStop drama of 2021 the only thing they made a movie about he left with between 15 and 30 million dollars in net worth that's what he left with somehow he had shown up three years later with a 175 million dollar gamestop position in a combination of stocks and calls that expire soon now that puts me on edge that rubs me the wrong way, and that makes me a little bit nervous, okay? A $175 million position with short-dated calls that will expire soon. It means the stock has to get up soon for him to make money on them. Uh, at the timing with his sort of pumping antics is a little bit concerning. However, the stock has indeed soared. And he made, in one day today, $78 million dollars thus bringing his paper net worth on GameStop to near $300 million as of right now. $300 million personally, a $289 million, he hasn't sold yet for, for our knowledge, but a $289 million paper fortune, again, based largely on two things. This Reddit post right here and this meme from a few weeks ago. <laughs> that is largely the impetus behind the stock surge. Very concerning times, even if he may not be the, the usual suspect of a villain. I'm, I am personally a little bit concerned. Now, what does this mean? Nikita Beer chimed in. If you've been toiling away at your startup for the last decade, just remember, 
A guy in his basement with a webcam and a headband just made a billion dollars in 12 hours. He didn't make a billion dollars, but <laughs> but he might. <laughs> if the stock hits the price that his calls are priced at in the next couple of weeks, he literally could be close to like 800, 900 million dollars, which is unreal. Um, E-Trade is considering kicking him off the platform for stock manipulation because were this anybody but him, let's say this is someone people didn't like, like, uh, I don't know, Nancy Pelosi or something. This would be considered, <laughs> uh, you know, doing what you can to increase the value of a stock right before your calls expire is at best gray area, at best gray area. He's being very careful not to say anything directly. Again, it's not illegal to post a picture of your positions, nor is it illegal to post a meme. He just knows what those things will do. And so it's, <laughs> it's unique. This has never really more been faced in stock market history. That's why it's so interesting. And I, I, I want to use the words of the great Matt Levine, who explained it even better than I could. He basically said this, imagine if you had a magic lamp that you could rub that would make a stock go up temporarily. Imagine if you had that. What would be the best way to make money off that superpower? Well, the best thing to do would be to get a huge position of stocks and short dated calls, then rub the lamp, then sell those calls. That would be the best way to do it. However, in real life, this magic lamp is usually called lying and it's illegal. So the way it happens in the past is people be like, hey, this company just invented a cure for cancer. <laughs> then they pump and then they dump it and they sell and then it's illegal. Or they might say, this crypto is going to change the world. Rub the lamp. <laughs> it goes up. They sell. They pump it up. But there are two people in human history, really, who have had the power to rub this lamp without saying anything wrong, without lying. Just, just by the sheer aura. The first of them and the most famous is Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk has shown an un... I mean, he does lie. Don't get me wrong. But he has shown an ability to just post an image of a doge and get Doge to pump. He doesn't have to say Doge is going up. He doesn't have to say it's mooning. He doesn't say it does anything. He doesn't have to promise anything. He just says Doge and it goes up, okay? Now, the second person is Roaring Kitty, who somehow has gotten access to this lamp in a way that's not illegal. He can somehow make a stock of a gigantic gaming retailer go up just by aura, <laughs> So he doesn't have to promise anything. He doesn't have to say this, the, the, it's going to be worth this much value or they're going to change this thing about the business or whatever that can be proven wrong. He can just use Aura and make a ton of money. However, we haven't really encountered this and we don't know whether or not this should be frowned upon or illegal because, again, if it happens the way I think it will, the average person will lose a lot of money on this and he may walk out with massive gains. That's, <laughs> that's spooky, okay? That's spooky. And, and the way this is all set up seems to be the fact that they're abusing this aura to pump and dump a stock on short-term options that is going to make him a lot of money and leave a lot of people holding the bags. That's my worry. Now, I don't even know, again, this is unsubstantiated, but we still don't even know if this is actually him. Because back in 2021, when Roaring Kitty wanted to talk about GameStop, he did it publicly. He used his own face, his own name. He explained the reasoning behind it. He had math and stats and graphs. He was on camera every day in front of Congress. But this time around, it is only the accounts posting vague, you know, <laughs> perfectly skirting the legal line uh, memes and images. It's just, a, it's such a different style. Now, maybe it is him, but that also begs the question, where did he get this much money? He walked off into the sunset with $30 million max, and now he's coming back with a 10X position in GameStop? Mark Cahodes is a man I respect and trust very much. This is the first guy I saw publicly call out FTX. He was the first guy to say, Sam Bankman fried is not who he pretends to be. I do not think, this guy's not a short, he's not a shield, he's not like a, uh, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a hater who wants to spread FUD. And he seems to think there's something possible, like maybe Ryan Cohen, who is the CEO of GameStop, is connected with Roaring Kitty or the account. I, the point is there's something fishy here. I don't think this is a perfect, great story. Because at the end of the day, compared to 2021, 
<laughs> GameStop is again down on hardware sales, down on software sales a lot, 30% down. By the way, that's because everyone is buying games digitally now. And also down on collectibles. GameStop is a shit business. <laughs> it's a bad business. It's not better than it was. It's worse. And so I, I just don't believe, and there's fewer shorts. So I don't, I'm, I'm confused. Now I do understand one thing. People will often say, listen, man, maybe so. But if we're going to get mad at him, what about Nancy Pelosi? Okay. He posts his positions, market manipulation. She makes millions that are trading completely normal. I fucking agree. I agree, bro. If anything, Keith Gill is pretty low on my priority list for people that are abusing the system. I get it. But I just want people who lionize this as heroism that's going to change the world and it's going to make you and everyone else a lot of money. Let's be realistic, bro. This feels fishy. This feels off. When something smells like, uh, you know, when something smells like shit, check the bottom of your feet. I, I, I... I don't want people to get swept up in the mania of a truly bad business getting bid up to unsustainable levels off of some dream that it's going to go to millions of dollars and make everybody rich, okay? And I think both of these people might be doing something that I think is gray area or beyond for the stock market. But that, that's here no there. That's here no there. Because there's much more going on in wins and fails. And I want to give a win to something way cooler, okay, than that. War. <laughs> <laughs> no, not war in Ukraine or war anywhere else in the world. I'm talking about the real war. The real war. The real win in war this year. There's been one entity that has been dominating the battlefront and making gains that people thought were impossible. And it's not Russia and it's not Ukraine. It's Dr. Pepper. If you're a Dr. Pepper fan, stand up and cheer, okay? Okay. Because if you care about the sales of things you like, well, guess what? Dr. Pepper has reversed a 40-year uh, period of dominance for Pepsi in second place and taken their spot. Pepsi has been second to Coke for 40 years. And as of today, Dr. Pepper has taken their spot. An unreal comeback story. In fact, in 2004... Dr. Pepper was sixth place behind Sprite. And now they have fought their way into second place. If you're a Dr. Pepper fan, this is your moment. Salute the flag. <laughs> and I, I bring this up because it's actually an unreal marketing story. Uh, again, this is the world of FMCG or fast moving consumer goods. This is where all of the world's great marketers usually come from. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because um, things like snack food, uh, fast food, etc. They're all pretty interchangeable, okay? Whether you get Pepsi or Dr. Pepper or Coke, it's all, you know, based on your taste. It's not it's such a big deal. <laughs> the taste isn't so different that it's, you know what I'm saying? It all comes down to marketing. And, and a strong branding presence over time can shift consumer taste and can shift the amount you're selling. And so it's impressive. Again, Dr. Pepper's been around since 1885. It is a very old company. <laughs> and yet to climb so much in a relatively short period of time is crazy. Back in 2004, when they were tied for six with Sprite, which is already impressive because Sprite had these sick LeBron 2004 Cavs wraps. <laughs> I still remember these. These were sick, dude. 2004 Sprite was the shit. Um, however, it was tied. Um, they have now drastically increased their sales. And I want to talk through a couple of the marketing things they did. First of all, Dr. Pepper is one of the few soda companies not owned by a gigantic, uh, you know, the Pepsi Coke duopoly conglomerate. They are their own company. They're co-owned with Keurig, the coffee company, but Dr. Robert Keurig is one company. And so they, realizing they were like the, the small middle ground of this cola wars, made an alliance with both sides. <laughs> What's one thing you notice about this picture? That's right. <laughs> Both the Coke machine and the Pepsi machine have Dr. Pepper in them. <laughs> the article literally described it as alliances with both sides. Like it's an actual war. <laughs> okay. They've used this to gain entry into almost every different, you know, all these different fast food places have contracts with one or the other. They're everywhere. 
Dr. Pepper is ubiquitous. They've also started to advertise around college sports uh, through more young people. They've, they've spent a consistent amount of time over decades trying to target things that hit young people so that they grow up as Dr. Pepper fans. So they've done college sports and youth athletics and um, TikTok stuff, and they've changed their branding to be a little, again, it's hard for a soda commercial to be cool, but think of how cringe Pepsi commercials are, and then watch this. Hey, man. You like Dr. Pepper? And its unique blend of 23 flavors. <laughs> it's a pepper thing. Anyway, this added pretty well. Uh, they've just been consistent about being a little quirkier, a little different, a little bit pick me. And it's been working. The point is it's been working slowly, but surely they've been climbing the ladder of, you know, again, this is very hard making this kind of growth in a, in a longstanding industry like this, very difficult. And they've been doing it. And, uh, TikTok again, the Stanley, uh, tumblers people put water in. They've sort of been pushing the idea of putting Dr. Pepper in there. Not going to lie. There is not a singular drop of water in this cup. Just 40 ounces of Dr. Pepper. But it's okay because the Stanley makes it healthy. There's thousands of these. Dr. Pepper plus Stanley collabs on TikTok. Um, they have realized that Gen Z, apparently, you guys are so quirky. You love different flavors. You love like out there flavors. So they dropped a bunch of new flavors like strawberries and cream and creamy coconut. You guys just like creamy stuff. <laughs> um, people on TikTok are putting pickles in their Dr. Pepper. I had not heard about this. Apparently there's, you know, millions of views on people putting pickles in Dr. Pepper. Things like this. How to make the viral Dr. Pepper with pickles. At home. Step one, ice. Step two, pickle time. We used to be a nation. <laughs> Step three, the good stuff. <laughs> why is it a tutorial? You just put pickles <laughs> in a cup. Why do you need a tutorial for that? I don't know, but either way, it went viral, okay? Everyone's doing it, and, uh, and they leaned into it and had some marketing around it. So all of that combined to be a marketing win for Dr. Pepper. And also, I want to say this. While they have done a clear increase in their sales, Pepsi's had a generational fall off. And I do mean generational because their peak was around the marketing they did about Pepsi generation. They did this whole Pepsi generation, young people are Pepsi thing. Now the youngest member of the Pepsi generation is 55. <laughs> they have not had a good marketing campaign since that. And now they are all old as shit. Pepsi has fallen off generationally. They're actually freaking out over at Pepsi HQ. Um... Prices up, stock down, tough. So, uh, fail to them and a win to Dr. Pepper. Uh, another win, though. I'm sorry. Another win to the concept I mentioned of the K-shaped economy. The K-shaped economy. Where some people are doing good. Most people are seeing their, 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 their shit go declining. And I want to talk about a win for these people up here, okay? Because, yes, they've been winning, but let's give them a little bit more. Let's give them a big win. A win for people like Aiden and Shake. <laughs> a big win for people at the top of the K-shape, Aiden and Shake, who went to EDC this past weekend. Okay? They had a great time at EDC where you can truly see the K-shape economy take place with the drink prices. <laughs> now, this is for... This is for a private table and not representative of the average bar, but let's get a little closer look here, okay? Maybe these guys did have a private table. They're 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 flexing. Um, you may have noticed a six pack of Smart Water for ninety dollars <laughs> at EDC. This costs eleven dollars normally. You may have noticed a uh, a Scotch and a Jack Daniels, a regular bottle of Jack Daniels for eight hundred and seventy five dollars. This is $18 normally. <laughs> a six pack of Bud Light for a cool 140. Drink it down, Aiden. Relax and enjoy your Bud. This would cost $8.99 uh, normally. And finally, if you really want to flex, 
you can get the notorious EDC package, which was two six liter bottles of champagne for $94,000. <laughs> A cool 94 grand for two bottles of champagne. Again, these cost 1700 at retail. Um, this is real. People did this. The fact that people are able to do this <laughs> and are spending this kind of money at EDC is a sign that at least some people in this economy are doing quite well. They feel they have money to burn and they have the time to figure out what they're going to tip on a $277,000 charge while some other people in our economy, people who are maybe at the bottom of the K, are figuring out how they're going to pay their financing on a $12 vodka cranberry. This is a real person who financed a vodka cran. God is good. <laughs> this is a buy now, pay later, four month split for a $12 vodka cran. And I bring this up because the stats are quite real. Despite Marketing Monday railing against it, you'd think I'd have more power or influence. It turns out I'm not able to slow down the number of people using Buy now, pay later, which has doubled in the past two years and is on track to hit, you know, 460 billion by 2027. Uh, there is a massive increase in the number of people using buy now, pay later services. Now, I've railed against these as often a debt trap. People are more likely to spend more than they can afford when they can split it into payments and only later do they realize they can't make those payments or it's uncomfortable to do so and, and fucks with their finances. And once you miss a payment, the penalties can be severe. Um, however, the reason I bring this up is because I'm a little bit scared about what I recently learned, which is that these companies do not report these debts to any credit rating agencies or any uh, larger institutional trackers of, of debt, which means that when I look at stats that show delinquency rate on credit card is going up to heights we haven't seen since, I don't know, 2007, eight crisis, or um, consumer loan debt is going, delinquency rate is going up. Delinquency is people not paying their debt, like people unable to make their payments. Up, up, or that um, auto loans are now at the highest point they've been since, uh, oh, I don't know. 2006 heading into the <laughs> the financial crisis. This is the exact moment heading up that they were in 2006. Um, I see these things and I think, well, that's bad, but at least it includes everyone that's doing buy now, pay later, but it doesn't. That stuff doesn't even include that. So all of the people who've been abusing this, it's not even included in all of these uh, rating agencies. We don't even know. It's, it's called basically shadow debt. So I, I, there's so much, you know, billions and billions and billions of, dollars of shadow debt on BNPL that we don't even know about or what it means or how much of it's delinquent. And that obviously worries me a little bit for the bottom end of the economy. Again, I don't know how much longer this side doing well can hold everything up, but I can definitely see more and more signs that this side is, is hitting some struggles. Now, I may not have a plan to pay that off for the average American, but I do have a plan if you happen to live in a different country, specifically Anguilla. <laughs> if you happen to live in the country of Anguilla in the Caribbean, I have got a plan for you. This is their beautiful flag, okay? They're not actually not technically a country, they're a British sovereign territory, but <laughs> let's not, we'll, we'll exclude that part. <laughs> they're a country, okay? Any of you that are in Anguilla, I've got a brilliant win and a perfect plan for you. Their, um, their president, their premier, just said that it's uh, thanks to God. He said, th what, this plan, some may call it a windfall. We just call it God smiling down on us. What is he talking about? Did they find gold? Did they find uh, lithium? What did they find that gave them this God smiling down level of, of debt freedom? Is it tourism? No. It's the fact that Anguilla's domain name is .ai. <laughs> They're getting a Tuvalu boom on steroids, okay? They are becoming the first natural resource economy country where the natural resource is how cool your name sounds when it becomes a domain. Uh, 
by selling each AI domain from between 140 to thousands of dollars for each one, they have paid off 20% of their total, I mean, 20% of their total government, re government revenue. <laughs> that means one fifth of what the government has to spend comes from dot AI because <laughs> all of these new domain names ever since the launch of chat GPT, <laughs> more than even the Tuvalu.tv boom. Again, we remember talking about this before. Tuvalu cashed in from Twitch and a few other things. But now, this .ai thing has been huge. And it's very, very unique. Again, we've, we've rarely seen a country where they're like, their unique natural resource is just this. It's that it's <laughs> that their name is a good domain name. They are talking about it like it's a gift from God. And they are using it to pay down uh, some of the debt the country has accumulated. And again, refocus on tourism and build more sparkling beaches for people to come visit. But kind of a hilarious, unique quirk of uh of the modern markets um speaking of unique quirks related to ai i don't know if many of you saw this but i want to give a huge win to google for being one of the five most valuable companies on planet earth and apparently not knowing what the fuck they're doing at all <laughs> because they keep doing the stupidest damn shit that i've ever seen it's unreal it is i don't know who is reviewing any of this stuff but it's unreal because they recently rolled out a, an automated AI overview of your questions on Google as part of their desperate, desperate, panicky race to not get lapped by ChatGPT. Google is very, very scared and very nervous about Google search being replaced by AI in the future. It is their biggest fear. It would crumble their whole business. And so they are trying to rush out AI features whenever possible, wherever possible. And it's leading to weird things like this. Is it okay to drink on antibiotics? Yes. <laughs> it's generally recommended to drink on antibiotics. Yippee. <laughs> or how about this? Is it okay to smoke while pregnant? Doctors recommend smoking two to three cigarettes per day. <laughs> and it's because the AI they use here is just stealing random comments, whether they're jokes or not. It's just stealing shit and has no ver veracity of whether it's true. Um, cheese not sticking to pizza. What can you do when your cheese doesn't stick to pizza? How about adding one eighth a cup of non-toxic glue to the sauce to give it more tackiness? <laughs> Is the AI trying to kill us? Is the AI trying to kill us? <laughs> This one was great. This one was my favorite. Um, how many rocks should I eat was the Google. According to geologists, you should eat at least one small rock per day. I wonder where they got that information that this AI is presenting so accurately. Maybe it's this the Onion article from 2021 that says geologists recommend eating one small rock per day. Is that exactly what it was trained on to give us this insanely dangerous and wrong answer? <laughs> it's a very bad look for google and they admit hey we screwed up okay liz reed their head of search says hey we might have made an oopsie here we're gonna we're gonna figure it out but they haven't yet walked back the feature again their desperation to get more ai training and try to keep up with open ai in any way possible is leading to a lot of stupid stuff a lot of weird announcements but that's not why I bring up Google. That's not why I'm giving them an extra big fail this week. In fact, all this is kind of funny to me. No, the reason I'm giving a fail is because I defended Chrome against the people in my chat that were like super Firefox pilled. I said, Chrome's been great to me. Why, why am I switching to Firefox? Firefox is old, who cares? But guess what? As of next week, possibly by the time you see this video, as of next week, Google Chrome is updating Chrome to block ad blockers in the browser itself. To limit ad blocking extensions kicks off next week. <laughs> they have been trying to do this for a while. They've gotten a lot of pushback. As of next week, they are finally rolling it out. This is a miserable upgrade given how necessary these blockers are for most parts of the internet. This is, this is awful. And I think it's just a larger part of many, many bad decisions Google's been making recently. The thing that is so interesting to me is that YouTube is such a great business 
and is actually kicking Netflix's ass and like every other media company's ass, but it's harnessed to such a bad larger business. <laughs> I think the rest of Google is so poorly managed. Um, I, if YouTube was a separate company, I would invest right now, but I hate the idea of investing in Google because I think they have such bad leadership. Um, anyway, speaking of leadership, speaking of remote work, speaking of tech companies, a new study was revealed that uh, I'm going to give a win because friendships are overrated. See, work friendships have faded in the remote era. A study revealed that people feel less connected to their coworkers than ever before, less likely to form friendships at work, not just because they're working fully remote, but because remote slash hybrid work has meant more meetings. And it turns out that meetings are the worst place to make a friend. <laughs> it turns out a day that is filled with a lot of meetings is one of the worst possible ways to make any friends. Whenever you had spontaneous interactions with coworkers at work, it was a great way to build a relationship. But now that you're only doing it structurally through half online, half in-person meetings, people are getting very frustrated with their coworkers and not building friendships. Leading to, again, when we spend so much time at work, a crisis of loneliness. However, the win here is that I have a solution. And in fact, I am part of the solution. Because a new study out of the UK indicates that YouTubers cheer people up more than casual friends. This is real. YouTubers cheer people up more than casual friends. One-sided relationships with YouTubers are more emotionally fulfilling than talking to casual friends. <laughs> Let's go. My parasocial friends, pleasure to meet you. Hope I'm cheering you up today. Hope you're having a good time. The war against depression starts with big A clips. It starts now. This can only be good for our society. Um, the YouTubers they use an example are PewDiePie, KSI, and Zoella. 52% of the participants in the study said they have a strong parasocial relationship with 36% saying they felt close to a YouTuber. Again, the regular contact with the YouTuber's personality or whatever is apparently building a relationship that is deeper than some of their casual friends, which is, of course, insane. However, however, I do want to say the study did mention that even these participants indicated that close friends, people they were close to, was the most satisfying, most fulfilling of all. Just want to keep that on the table. <laughs> Everyone, even the most lost in the sauce, said the most valuable thing to them was their closest friends. YouTubers only replace the, the shitty friends, <laughs> which is good. I'm happy to replace shitty friends, just not the close ones. Um, but that is the major uh, marketing business news for the week. However, normally we end this segment with a, with a segment called What's Up Beijing? I'm going to cut it off right there because this week we are going to a different country and saying hola Mexico. Hola Mexico because we're talking about the elections. The elections in Mexico. Hola Mexico. We've had a brand new Mexican election where they have just elected kind of by default because it was two female candidates each other. They elected their first female president. The first female president. Her We've made her sorry. <laughs> Let me give you this quick video that gives you a primer on what happened, and then I'm going to explain a little bit more. Mexico! Mexico has elected its first female president. Claudia Scheinbaum received about 60% of the country's votes. Her closest competitor... Again, a pretty dominant win for her. 60% is pretty dominant. Her competitor, again, I think at 28%. ...received about 27%. 20, yeah. Agradezco también. I want to thank you as well because for the first time in 200 years of the Republic, I will become the first woman president of Mexico. The new president is a former climate energy scientist and served as the mayor of Mexico City. Scheinbaum's election is another first for Mexico. While the 61-year-old says she does not consider herself religious, she is the first person of Jewish heritage to lead the primarily Catholic country. Scheinbaum's six-year term will start on October 1st. Her six-year term starts on October 1st. Six years she'll be in power. And I want to give you a bit of context. I spoke to Ari's family and got a bit of more, you know, boots on the ground context for what's going on with this election in Mexico. First of all, she is 
a continuation of the current president, which is this guy, uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, known as AMLO, okay? Known colloquially as AMLO. She's essentially like continuing his policies. He was very popular current president, and she is sort of currently seen as in his shadow. Um, people, uh, I mean, just for example, there was a, in one of the articles I was reading, there was like merch for her and merch for him at one of her rallies and all of his merch sold out and she had most of it left. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like an, a Biden to Obama kind of thing. So people really want more of him and they are, they are liking her into power because his term is up. That's sort of, I want to give that context. However, um, without really a deep knowledge of, of which side's exact policies uh, are, I don't want to go over like which candidate I prefer. I'd rather just say that this election cycle in Mexico, we can celebrate one president getting elected, but the real thing to talk about is how incredibly violent this election cycle was. It was, if you look into it, on an unreal level of violence in this, this round uh, of an election. Um, again, uh, dozens of candidates have been killed. Literal candidates for almost every level of local government have been killed during this election cycle as cartels expand their level of control. Um, it's the bloodiest in modern history. And again, 37 candidates were assassinated ahead of this vote, sometimes days before they were elected. It's it's truly unreal. This is her like number one pressing issue. And, and while she is popular and has most of the vote, the people I spoke to seemed very unconvinced that she's gonna be able to do anything about it. That's what's concerning to me is that whatever candidate wins, they need to find a way to deal with the ever increasing amounts of political violence in Mexico. A mayoral candidate was murdered two days before their election. There was one story I was reading about a guy who, um, I think it was this woman who, well, uh, there was multiple, but a guy who basically said, I will not be corrupt. I will not bow down to the cartels. I'm doing this for you. He was handshaking people around the, the, the local town where he wanted to get votes. And he was shot dead during that meet and greet. A woman who again said she would not bow to the cartels and began a campaign the first day of her touring the city with a drive-by and kill. It's literally, it's gotten beyond hiding. I mean, it's not something you can uh, afford to ignore. Political violence is now openly in the open and mayoral candidates are dying left and right. It's truly crazy. And when I talk to Ari's family who lives in Mexico, that it's the number one thing in their mind. Like something has to be done. This is, it's untenable at this point. Um, secondly, and not as important, but still important, is that one of the reasons AMLO is so popular is because on his way out during his election year, he drastically boosted spending on social programs for the poor, which is a good thing, okay? He helped a lot of social programs to help people who are struggling be able to get on their feet and have payments and, and he subsidized costs of transportation and oil and other things like that. These were, these were good things. However, he chose to pay for these things in an election year by taking on debt. <laughs> there was no raising of taxes to afford to pay those things. They just borrowed the money and he kind of dumped it on the next woman to figure it out. So now she has to figure out what to do <laughs> about these extremely expensive social programs and it will have to be a tax price hike, right? The, or, or cutting these programs. So either way, she's kind of been set up to fail by AMLO, which is a problem. Um, again, they have a massive deficit uh, in the election year and it is, uh, it's a problem that will have to get figured out. However, it does end on a positive note. I just want to give you these things as like a reality of the situation, which is that Mexico is in a difficult spot and that she, despite riding a wave of support. And in fact, I do want to say she, her party also won a vast majority of their equivalent of Congress. So she can get anything she wants passed. It's going to, they have, they have complete sweeping control of like all bodies of government. They're going to have some problems to fix. They're going to have to find a way to fix it. There is one good thing, okay? The video mentioned earlier that she is the first Jewish president in Mexico. A pretty big milestone because uh, it's a majority Christian country. There's a very small Jewish population. It's pretty crazy that she was able to do that. She hasn't talked much about her religion, so it wasn't a big part of the campaign. However, real studious journalists figured out that she's actually, a, she's fake. She's not really Jewish. She's been faking it the whole time. Because 
She thanked Jesus in her speech. She thanked Jesus. She's not involved in the Jewish community. She thanked Jesus. I've never seen a less Jewish Jew than this because she thanked Jesus until they figured out it was actually her husband, Jesus. <laughs> she was just, just thanking Jesus. This is a real, this is a real controversy. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is this week's Marketing Monday. Tune in next week for even more wins and fails from around the world in marketing and business. Thanks for watching. Yeah! Bye, YouTube! Bye, YouTube! Woo! Oh, I forgot to mention about the um, Keith Gill Roaring Kitty stuff. I talked with CoffeeZilla today. We spoke about it, and we both agree that it just feels fishy, dude. Um, yeah, we were just talking. It was because uh, I wanted to see what he thought, you know, as we were speaking, and he was, yeah. You know, he's doing it in such a smart way. It's hard to criticize, but it it just feels wrong. It feels like either someone's backing him or or someone bought his accounts or, or he just flipped up because it, it's just more pump and dumpy than ever before. Um, anyway, I thought that was interesting. We're going to watch CoffeeZilla's video now. I'm really interested in it. CoffeeZilla has a video about a YouTuber bank that is not paying out. Apparently, Graham Stephan is involved in a bit of scamming. Who to thunk it? Graham Stephan, the China is dying YouTube thumbnail guy? I never would have guessed. Um, but we're going to watch this video and learn more about it right now on CoffeeZilla's video. I'm going to take one quick break and run an ad, if you don't mind. Uh, to get water and wipe down my pits, which are starting to sweat through this Lehman Brothers shirt. What a quick ad. Thanks for watching. I'll be right back. We're going to watch this uh, YouTuber bank video. Get a drink, get a snack. Get a drink, get a snack. What's up? Hey, Shrock, I'm Mexican and I voted for Claudia Scheinbaum myself. I wanted to ask you what you would do if you woke up tomorrow and were a glue gunner. I guess I would help stop the balloons threat. Thanks for that great question. <laughs> Thanks for that. Great question. Really, really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> hey, Shrek, any thoughts on a bigger talk or MM segment going into all the parallels between now and 08? No, uh, because people will say it's too depressing. <laughs> But also, I don't think it's quite similar to 08. I think I draw some parallels, but many of the things I find more similar to 01 uh, rather than 08. Uh, but I, you know, I just I just see deterioration in the bottom 60% uh, of the market. Um, <laughs> 01, not, not 9-11, like the 01 crash. Um 
One and you thank you for the gifties again. Thank you so much for the gifties. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for supporting uh, Margaret Monday. I do sincerely appreciate it. And the stream. Um, let's see here. One second. Oh, no. Wait one second. I have to uh, upload this fucking video. Uh oh, wait one second. Um... Boo, 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 boo. So, we wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 hold. Hold, hold, hold. I have to do this. It's very important. It's very important. I have to make a thumbnail. <laughs> it's very important. It's extremely important. Thumbnail stream? I will show you. Don't worry. I will show you the stream. It's going to be so based. Um, It's going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, what? How does such a good thumbnail exist? Nope, that's not it. But you should have to wait. You got to let me do my thing. I'm going to do my stuff, as Kendrick Lamar says. He was talking about me making a thumbnail. Uh sorry, I need to get my right there. Uh what do you guys think about this thumbnail? Okay? It's gonna be called the title is I interviewed two single people about modern dating. Okay? That's the title. And then the picture is them being interviewed and the quote says, it sucks. <laughs> I feel like that's clickable. No, I don't think it needs laser eyes. I don't think it needs laser eyes. Purple border, nice. Or isn't single? You know it. He was single when he talked about it. Um, put something under blur. What do you mean under blur? Add Joker face or laser eyes. I'm not gonna add Joker face or laser eyes. To <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it's not helpful. You know that's not helpful, right? It's not, it does, no. Add a Mr. Beast face somewhere? Why would I add a Mr. Beast face somewhere? Why would, why would that make sense? And it was pretty for more story. Add your disappointed fist. Oh, me like doing this? That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Hold up. That's not a crazy idea. The Tinder logo? Oh, you're right. That's actually a good idea. Okay. Tinder. Tinder logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're onto something there. You're onto something there. Okay. We need to add the Tinder logo somewhere. I need like a Tinder. Surely it needs, no, please stop saying about the laser eyes, right? We can all agree that it doesn't need laser eyes. <laughs> I think we can all agree. That's no one. Um, pull it. I'm not, see, I can't pull it and I'll tell you why. And it is going to sound crazy to you, but. I have this sneaking suspicion that you guys are saying it because you think it's funny and that you think it's kind of a funny meme and you don't actually believe it. 
I, that's my sneaking suspicion. I know it sounds crazy. Um, but I just get the sense that you guys don't actually want the laser eyes. And instead, what you want is to see me put something stupid <laughs> in the fucking video, in the thumbnail. And at least I know for a fact that you will not ruin my comments for being like, where's the laser eyes in the thumbnail and not have any fucking watch percentage because you're just going to jump in there to say your stupid message. <laughs> I know for a fact you guys aren't cruel enough to do that, right? To just jump into a brand new fucking video. Uh, okay. I think you can call me crazy. You can call me crazy. I think this is... A great thumbnail. Um, what about... Laser eyes are based. How about laser eyes blowing up the Tinder logo? No, 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 no. Wait, what about this? Too busy? Maybe it's too busy. Why is Unk doing a thumbnail in the middle of the stream? You never been to a thumbnail stream before? Cringe, bro. Too much? Too busy? Okay, what if it was just... Wait, dating apps. Um, What if it was all of the dating apps somehow? That'll make it more, that'll make it less busy. <laughs> Put like 40 fucking dating apps on the side. That'll that'll clean it right up. Um Grinder for Pride Month. Dude, I'm thinking of like You guys aren't even fucking getting the vision, dude. I need like app icon. That's what I need. Tinder app icon. That's what I fucking need. Yes, right here. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Christ Lord. Okay, then, then, hear me out. You aren't getting my vision of laser eyes. I'm, I'm getting it. I am, I really am. You guys are really convincing me. What if we try it for six months without laser eyes, okay? And you guys promise not to post anything. And then after six months, I will edit the thumbnail to put laser eyes in. <laughs> How about that? Huh? Clip it? Yeah, but I, you have to not post a stupid fucking comments with 1% watch time because it will fuck my video at launch. However, if you do that, then I will in six months look at this stupid fucking clip. <laughs> uh, Tinder logo, hinge logo. Hinge, app icon. Get the vision. Get the vision, get the vision, get the vision, get the vision, get the vision. Wait, no, what about, what's the second most popular dating app? It's, uh, it's Bumble? Okay, whatever. Bumble app icon. Grinder. Four Chan, Four Chan is the most popular dating app for you. Getting a lot of good matches on Four Chan, finding the love of your life on Four Chan. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay, I don't believe it. What's the third most popular? If I have, if I had to pick three, right? Tinder, Bumble, and what? Hinge? Okay, fine. Tinder bubble hinge. Hinge app icon.
J date? No, I'm not putting in J date. Okay, what do you guys think about this as a as a fucking um, we're getting closer? Maybe look at this. Like I interviewed people about. It's cooked. It's cooked. Okay. Changing it sucks to it's cooked. I'm that's fine. <laughs> sure. Blur the background. Okay. That's seems unnecessary, but sure, I can I guess I can blur the background. Where's the blur tool? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think that did anything, but sure. Uh, it's missing farm. I think the problem with hinge is that it, the color is bad. Um, what the skibbity? I'm not gonna add that. I'm not gonna add that. I need a. I need a different. I have Tinder. It's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. I just need a different app icon. Raya. Grinder app icon. The Grinder app icon looks like. I, did you guys know this was the grinder app icon? I guess some of you did. <laughs> this looks like a fucking video game thing. This looks like a Discord competitor. <laughs> or like web security. Yeah, this does not look like a dating app. That's so funny. Yeah, it looks like Gilded. It looks like... <laughs> that's really fun. That's a, that feels like a terrible dating app type... Um, who, what else is a, how about okay Cupid? Okay Cupid app icon. That one's fine. Okay. It could just be Instagram. I suppose, I suppose. Okay, get rid of hinge. And then copy layer style. And then paste layer style. And now, okay. I interviewed people about modern dating. And then it's this, and it says, it sucks. Boom. Boom. Um, logos way too big. I like Insta better. <laughs> it's just not a dating app. Instagram is not a dating app. Why would I? You guys, you're, you're. What is the point? It is, I'm going to try it because, because I do agree that Instagram is more clickable. That's the only thing is I do agree that Instagram in the thumbnail is like, it just kind of stops your eye. And already it does look better because it's a better logo. <laughs> um, I think this is pretty good. I interview people about modern dating. You see the title, interesting. Then you see this, it sucks. You're like, damn, I agree. I'm gonna fucking click in. Uh, I'm gonna run it and then you guys can uh, suck my whole balls, okay? Um, um, 
not gonna make the only thing I would like is like if if uh maybe I should make their faces bigger that's the one thing is like like yeah like more like this and then I can somehow yeah I want to make it like all face can I get a better blur photo and then just cut it in imagine I just get a better blur photo and cut it in maybe I'm a genius uh big head rounded edges yeah I know yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I get the vision. I get the vision. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay, I fucked up and it put the uh <laughs> it put the poor Warren Buffett in there. <laughs> that's, that's ship it, dude. Ship it. No, I'm already gonna use that. I'm using this for next week's for for today's marketing Monday. This is the thumbnail. Otherwise I would. Um, so I need to put this here. Yeah, like this. It sucks. This is pretty good. It also puts the mic in. Oh my God, it came together. It came together. It came together. This is good. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. We're running it. Rachel looking blurry. Well, I fucking boofed up the image. Um, she might just have... Round the bumble icon? I I can't. I don't have that capability. <laughs> bumble, bumble icon rounded. Okay. This'll do. This'll do. You can just round it yourself? Oh, interesting. And you can shut the fuck up yourself. <laughs> So I guess we both have things we could do on our own. It's a good idea. That is a good idea. Um, I need to put a square here. <laughs> uh, uh, put this here. Put this here. Uh-huh. And then fill it with white. And then merge these layers. And then copy layer style, paste layer style. Yes, he's cooking with gasolina. He's gonna put this here. Then he's gonna get rid of the, the middle one. The, yes, dude, look at this. Look at what he's done. It's brilliant, it's genius. It's so smart. Okay, bada bing. And I think that is it. I'm outside of possibly a less blurry Rachel, but bada. You know what I'm saying? Bada. What, what am I gonna do? This is kind of a better Rachel. Okay, I'm doing this. File, uh, export, save as for web, modern dating v1. Okay, for real, what's up with all the skibbity Biden shit? <laughs> it was uh, a really miserably good. Um, you know how late night talk, sh talk shows are super funny now? Do you know how late night talk shows are like the funniest things on earth and they're not definitely a relic of a bygone time? Well, Stephen Colbert had a really funny segment called Skibbity Biden. Um, great, this looks great.
It's live! Please check it out and give a thumbs up to Rocket Money for supporting. Rocket Money, they're the best. Rocket Money! Now we're going to watch CoffeeZilla. CoffeeZilla! Actually, don't watch it live because you will get bad retention, dude. Just don't even open it. Don't even fucking open it, bro. Let's watch CoffeeZilla and see about this YouTube bank that won't let you withdraw money. Interesting. Today we're talking about a bank promoted by you. I'll change my title. Sorry. One second. It is no longer Marketing Monday. It is... CoffeeZilla. YouTube bank is scamming people more. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Okay, a bank promoted by YouTubers. Look at this great freeze frame of Graham Stephan. <laughs> Dude looks fucking blazed in this freeze frame. Ah, he's a chiller, dude. I can't be mad at him. He's a chiller. YouTubers. It's now become a casino, and users can't get their money out. This video is sponsored by Yada Save. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada Savings. The Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Hey, my name's Daniel. Um, my wife and I, our family has 18,000 uh, in Yada that we can't get out. Over $60,000 frozen up in Yada. $15,440.06 frozen in Yada. $7,270.60 frozen. $583. I'm sorry, but like none of this could buy you Dom Perignon at EDC. So why do I care? It's broke talk. Do you know what I'm saying? Every one of these people, this is like chump change. You can't even... If you can't get bottle service at EDC, then why am I supposed to be like upset about it? Um, but I guess I'll watch. There's $98,000 frozen in you. Okay, now we're talking. 94,000, give or take frozen. $46,699. Yeah, it's a disaster. And we're going to break down what happened. Let's start with the basics. A few years ago, Yada Savings advertised itself as a no-lose lottery through YouTube. Okay, again, I'm sorry, just the pause. <laughs> I, I, this is the first time hearing about this, so this is all new to me. But as per usual, I don't know how clearly I can say this. If someone promise you a, promises you a no-lose lottery, <laughs> you are being scammed. I don't know how to make it clearer. I don't know how to get around that part of your mind where you're like, oh, interesting, a no-lose lottery. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, there is, you, there's, that doesn't exist. There's no business that's a no-lose lottery. There's no good deals on the fucking sports betting apps. There's no, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's, they, they just. Where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. It's called Gamified Savings, and some took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example of this was Graham Stephan, who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos are <laughs> deleted, as Yada has become more than a harmless savings app, and users can't get their money out. But to understand what exactly happened, let's first go back to when they demanded an apology from me back in 2022. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World, and for some reason, they didn't like the cameo. They said, quote, given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Now, I never said that exactly, so I didn't apologize, but I found the next bit a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, you could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada. <laughs> Just, they're trying to scam out a free ad read? <laughs> you could also play a commercial for ours if you want. Like, that would be fine. You could actually have us... Maybe like a third, maybe a whole video. Maybe just do a 30 minute video about how great Yada is. What are you talking about? Yada, if you wish, which I found odd. Either way, I decided to today take them up on their offer. Two years later, when I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no-lose lottery. Oh, it's On fun. their app, Yada now offers roulette, 
dice blackjack that you can lose money on. Now, honestly, I was shocked by this. This is the same company that's saying, play the no-lose lottery, regular lotteries are scams, they prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course, <laughs> I reached out to the CEO and he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes earlier this year. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build off the program. Now, I don't know which lawyer told Yada blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. All Yada is really doing is running a loophole. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada cash, but this is a very sneaky claim because one way to get Yada cash is by purchasing tokens on the app. These tokens are pointless, except that they come with free. Guys, this is great. I just want to pause for a second um, and talk about something unrelated. And that's the fact that Twitch does not allow you to run a lottery on your streaming service, which is true. You can't have people buy subs as a chance to enter to win something. However, unrelated, I am introducing a new program called the Atrioc Fun Stravaganza where every sub is given one Atri token, okay, that coincidentally can be used to win massive prizes, like uh, uh, the signed gun, okay, that I have. So if you sub right now, you can get one Atri token, and if you choose to, can be entered to win this amazing program. Thank you so much for getting involved. One and each, thank you for the gift. Bluster, thank you for the 23 months. Bang, thank you for the 32 months. Wow, player one penguin, thank you for the 47. Enjoy your Atra token. Um, your buddy Lukey, thank you for the 44 months. You are also entered to win an Atra token. G Bozo, thank you for the four months. Again, this is not a lottery. Not a lottery. Over tempo, thank you for the two months. Gaming dude, thank you for the seven months. Tim with the 39, one token for you. Oh man, Shaky Bones, Plurt, Pork Rib, Bryson Baggins. Wow, tokens are flying left and right. Zeno, Clash, Shell Recruiter, Germinator. <laughs> so funny. Dude. <laughs> dude, I do a whole fucking Marketing Monday presentation. You know, decent amount of subs. I do one bit about a fake lottery <laughs> twice that. <laughs> but it's not fake. Well, it's not, it's not a lottery at all. However, you do get the token and you are entered to win. Um, Glad that you're thinking of the 49 months. Bob's on a bottom the 10 months. Even he thinks of the five. Rocktavius. Um, hey, Jay. BZ Buck. Wisest cactus. You are truly the wisest cactus because you've entered to win a signed gun. 23 months. Uh, Sanguine Phoenix. Thank you for the 36. Problem. The one Alfredo. Blockbuster 045, thank you for the nine. Jetty Life, thank you for the 14. My goodness. My goodness. And once you win this signed gun, you probably ought to trade it up for an Ari skin or some sort. Salty Louie, thank you so much. Most subs you've ever read. <laughs> Most subs I've ever gotten, dude. That's fucking. Uh, all right. Yada Cash. Spend ten dollars, get thirteen free Yada Cash to gamble with. The more you spend, the more free Yada Cash you get. It's really just a dude. Jensen, uh, the CEO of Nvidia, he he was like, it kind of went viral for him saying this now, but he said it all the time. He said it for years. He used to say, "The more you spend, the more you save." <laughs> it's like on stage, and he would always say it after announcing the price of like a new GPU. And I would always cringe a little bit because I knew we were going to get memed on. <laughs> he said it. He used to say it like, I remember he said it after we announced the 20 series. And it was, uh, you know, it was a terrible, you know, because it was like the price went way up over the 10 series. And everyone was mad online. And he was like, the more you spend, the more you save. Uh, but it went viral recently because he said it about GPUs. And he said he kind of poked fun at it. Uh -oh. stupid loophole to claim that this is all a sweepstakes and that blackjack dice and roulette are somehow not gambling which is of course ridiculous but most interesting i think is the admission from the yada ceo that quote yes this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings the savings based business model wasn't working so we decided to pivot but pivot to what to the exact thing your system i'm sorry i need to read this 
You can make your own moral judgment of whatever you want, and that's fine. But the issue that matters is that our customers have not been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. It would be helpful if we could focus on that issue to help spread awareness and expedite a resolution. That's crazy. That's your fault. I mean, why are you asking CoffeeZilla to help blame Evolve and Synapse because your customers can't get their funds for three weeks? Decided to pivot. Uh, but pivot to what? To the exact thing your system was designed to fight stupid lotteries that waste people's money and you pivot to just getting people hooked on actual gambling? Is that it? It's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is. It's utterly ridiculous <laughs> it's and true. I told their CEO as much. <laughs> and to my surprise, he responded asking me for help. Quote, you can make your own moral judgment of whatever oh, okay. you want. They that's fine. Early, but the issue that matters is that our customers haven't been able to access their funds for nearly three weeks. I think you can help. And honestly, he's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not getting their money. But I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino, the exact thing they were fighting, and that's disgusting. Two, YouTubers brought people into a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address it, most of them have gone radio silent. Some are deleting their original videos. Now, yeah. of course, most of these YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was going to pivot from savings to gambling or that users' accounts would be frozen. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. I've spoken to a lot of these people. They all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. I had no idea. I stand firmly with rocket money. I'm just telling you right now, if they ever promote a scam, I will make a video and upload it. Rocket money is a great app that I use, continue to use and have used for years. I will not delete any videos that have it. And for whatever reason it pivots, I stand firmly with rocket money. I use it regularly. Aiden just messaged me. By the way, I want to think this is funny. If you guys don't know, Aiden has promoted rocket money many times he never actually used it until he watched one of my ads <laughs> and then he messaged me and he's like is it actually good and then he started using it and then he just messaged me recently and said it helped him a lot okay again i don't know if you have almost no subscriptions maybe it's not useful for you to, but for me and for a lot of people it saved money uh i stay i'm just telling you right now that i stand by it i like the team they like marketing monday i like talking to them I mean this genuinely. I, I'll be so sad if they don't renew with me because it's one of the few sponsors that I really like. Um, so I'm just saying that in response to this, that I feel comfortable promoting them and I have no worries, but I'm just, I'm just telling you. Um, and uh. that's all fine, but when people bring up your name as an ex How on earth did Aiden get so rich? Bro, each yard member makes 50 racks a month. A month from the yard Patreon. I'm, that's ballpark now. It's around that. I just want you to understand what level of bread. That that Patreon's unreal. Uh... Explicit reason they got into this savings account it starts to ring a lot more hollow. So my brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. That would have been Graham Stephan. Uh, Stephen Graham video. Graham Stephan's. Graham Stephan video. Graham Jeez. Stephan came out with a uh, a video. Graham Stephan, Andre Jack, guys that I like as you know financial YouTubers. Yeah. This Those two guys are like my least favorite. <laughs> Andre Jack and Graham Stephan. Largely because they are the most egregious ones that did the China collapse in 30 days thing. <laughs> they were like the fucking forefront of uh, that YouTube style. Uh, it's begun. Yeah, they also promoted FTX. Hmm. This is the reason I hold financial YouTubers to a higher standard. Overwhelmingly, I find them to be more influential. Although I have to say again, I don't hold them or anyone else personally responsible. I hold them all irresponsible for promoting financial products. This is not like promoting Dollar Shave Club, where people get a product and that's it. If the company goes bust, it doesn't matter. Financial products are different. You were asking. Quick pause. I agree with them too. It's like, for example, when Shaq shilled FTX, 
I know for a fact that Shaq did no due diligence. <laughs> that Shaq just took the money. And at the end of the day, if I'm taking financial advice from Shaq, it's a little bit on my fault. I do think it's a little scummy, but a lot of people were fooled by SBF and Shaq just wanted the cash. And it doesn't hurt my brand of Shaq in the long term, just to be honest. He takes these shells for a lot of things. However, Graham Stephan specifically for this thing, I know the video they're talking about. The one where he said, I bought a bank was the title of the video. I guess it's deleted now, but I've seen that video. That's different than just an ad read too. That's not just a very marked ad read. That's like him making organic content about him getting involved as like an investor slash founder, truly believing in the product. That's probably where most people heard about this video because ad reads often get skipped. Look at the retention graph. Most people skip past ad reads. It's like the dirty secret of the industry of podcasts and of YouTube. People skip. It's not like if it has a 500,000 view video, much less than that actually watch the ad. They get skipped. But if a video is about that thing, then all of a sudden, all of those views are like involved and it feels more organic and they're more likely to... So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a little different. I think that deserves a little bit more criticism. I think it's, I think it's egregious. Asking people to put their money somewhere. If in five years that goes bust, people are going to remember you advertised it to them. And if you're uncomfortable with that, if you think your bank might blow up in five years, don't promote it. Shill a VPN and have a nice day. But if you insist on telling people the best place to put their money, you better not be upset when they... Shill a VPN and have a nice day is funny because... <laughs> I mean, I don't think a VPN is necessarily a scam. You can use it. It's not a scam, but it's like most people don't need it. That's fine. I mean, like the only thing VPNs are actually useful for is getting region lock content for most people. That's like it. If you want to find an easy way to get like uh, British shows or anime or some shit, that's, that's, that's what it is. Everything else I think for most people will be, there's like edge cases, but, um, that's like the main thing. So just, if you're, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't think there's anything wrong with promoting a VPN, but I don't think they're like this. I don't know. That's the great thing to choose if you're not doing Listen, um, by the way, as I was editing this video, someone released a podcast sponsored by you guessed it, Yada. This episode is brought to you by Yada. This is despite the fact that currently withdrawals are frozen. I love the Almost Friday guys, but man, they do shill like nobody's business. <laughs> Dude, that podcast is like fucking one third ads and it's anything. They, those guys are, those guys are taking checks uh, from anyone. Uh, you know, young guys making money. I'm, it's hard for me to get super mad, but again, you know, do a little better, hopefully. Frozen. Um, and now I want to pivot myself and talk about frozen funds, which is a huge problem that goes beyond Yada and influencers. Since early May, many fintechs, including Yada and Juno and many others, have had all their user funds frozen. Up to 200,000 accounts are affected. And it's for many reasons that surprised users. See, most people saw these companies like Yada as banks. Remember, Graham Stephan even said, I bought a bank. I just bought a bank. <laughs> but this isn't quite accurate. These are fintech companies, not banks. They're not holding anyone's money. They're not FDIC insured. They have a bank they work with that is FDIC insured, and that's where your money is sent to. In this case, the main bank is called Evolve. Normally, this distinction doesn't matter, but when things go wrong, it makes all does he cover what FDIC insurance is? Because I can explain it, but I don't know if it's already in the video. Does anyone know that's seen it? He does? Okay. okay. Well, the difference. So does the distinction that fintech companies like Yada don't work directly with Evolve. They have a middleman called Synapse. And I want you to think of Synapse as an adapter from old tech to new tech. It's kind of like your iPhone dongle. Remember that? Connecting a lightning cable to a headphone jack. That's Synapse, connecting banks to FinTech. And I know I'm not exactly an expert on this. So I brought in someone who is to explain what happened because the next part gets kind of confusing. My name is Jason Mikula. You know, I spent about over a decade in FinTech and banking, including okay. at Goldman Sachs. So I have, I have some experience in the sector. What actually has gone wrong here? So the sort of proximate cause was on Saturday, May 11th, uh, Synapse, which is this 
technology middleware provider or banking as a service provider revoked Evolve Bank's access to what in the court filings is being referred to as the dashboard, the dashboard. Uh, which is basically Synapse's IT systems, uh, including actual ledger information. And so when Synapse revoked access to that information Why? on Saturday, May 11th, Evolve functionally froze all of those programs by ceasing to process payments. Cool so graphics. Evolve's decision to respond to Synapse revoking that access is what led to users being unable to access their funds beginning on May 11th and continuing through to the present. People are saying, oh, it's FDIC insured. Why isn't that working? Yeah, so it is end users confusion is entirely understandable, right? One of the great successes of the American banking sector and American banking regulation is that you, generally speaking, don't have to worry about whether or not your money is safe. However, that in this case, uh, and it's, it's not the only case. This only applies if you have under $250,000. Just that is true. If you have under 250 k any FDIC-insured bank, you're good. The government will just step in and make you whole if that bank fails, no matter what. Um, but if you have more than that, you are at risk, just as a heads up. And it is per account, so if you split it across a number, like I was reading this story of this um, rich guy who was concerned about bank failure, so he split like his... I feel like it was like $50 million across so many different accounts that you had 250 K <laughs> like what a huge fucking pain in the ass. What a fucking massive pain in the ass. Like you have to have fucking hundreds of accounts, but yes, that is a way to do it. Um, has engendered some confusion for end users who see FDIC insured and, and read that as, I, this is safe. My money's safe. I'm going to get my money back. Now, what is FDIC insurance and what does it do? It protects depositors and users in the event that a bank fails. A bank has not failed here. Uh, and so there is no direct role for the FDIC to step in. If Evolve had failed, the FDIC would step in, seize the bank, uh, and sort of figure out the next steps. That's obviously not what's unfolding here. Right, so if you have money frozen, it is FDIC insured from a bank failure. But in this case, banks haven't failed. It's the in-between layer that has, meaning your funds are stuck until this is fixed. But it's not exactly clear when that will be because Evolve and Synapse can't agree on who owes what. The founder of Synapse says it's all in Evolve's control. We are doing everything we can to release funds. Meanwhile, Evolve says Synapse's records are wrong. Quote, recent ledgers and data do not align with the actual movement of funds in and out of oh, Evolve. Oh, some kind Basically, of fraud? someone is lying. Or even worse, doesn't know what the truth is. And this isn't a disagreement about a few pennies. It's $150 million being argued about. But according to new reporting from the information, such discrepancies were known about for at least two years before the revoked uh -oh. dashboard and Synapse's bankruptcy. Meaning this could have been avoided, but it wasn't leaving a bankruptcy trustee to pick up the pieces and hundreds of thousands of accounts frozen. And we don't know who owes who what or when we'll find out. But all I have to say is who cares? People <laughs> need their money back. They were told these fintech programs were safe. Now they're stuck. Look, after talking to the people affected, I get it. Banking is complicated, especially as I spoke to Jason, that became super clear. But historically, this hasn't stopped us from helping the elite when complex banking problems come up. Remember Silicon Valley Bank? Yeah. And look, I know it's a different story. But back then, we moved heaven and earth to make sure startup founders got their money back beyond the FDIC insurance limit. Well beyond. The rich and power. Well beyond, dude. Silicon Valley Bank pisses me off because if there's ever a bank to let fail, it was that one. If there was ever one bank in human history, the government could be like, ah, you know what? This one will allow. That one was like almost all very rich tech founders with massive amounts of money over the, they were talking about how like, if this fails, it will cripple the whole, I mean, they were like saying, they were screaming to heaven and earth. This could be the end of the economy if it fails. They just lied out of their teeth and they got all of their money back after investing in a, you know, it's stupid. Um, 
powerful, we bent the rules. And all I'm saying is I get that this is also not a traditional FDIC insurance case. But dare I say we give regular Americans the same level of urgency and empathy we gave to Silicon Valley founders when we decided to bend the rules for them. It's been three weeks with no end in sight, and these people have mortgages to pay, taxes, bills, and quibbling about the middleman or the bank whose fault it is is to miss the point. Trust me, there's plenty of blame to go around in this story. I mean, I don't think there needs to be a bail here at all. Assuming they have the money, they just, I, I think it should be uh, a penalty. If a customer has funds with your bank and can't access them, they should be, the bank should be fined. There should be some sort of system. And that way, every week they don't figure it out, they're getting more and more fines. It should be financially ruinous for them to not be able to let customers access their funds. Like, we don't need to come in and have the government make these people whole with taxpayer money. They should just, there should be a punishment for bad business. You shouldn't be allowed to take someone's money as a bank and then uh, disappear when they ask for it back. Um, they're already bankrupt. If they're bankrupt, then, then the FDIC should be able to step in and pay it out. He's saying the bank hasn't failed, so they're not bankrupt. Um, but for the immediate future, let's focus on getting these people their money back before they're punished for something that isn't their fault. Because time is of the essence. Even if these people eventually get their money back, the win matters just as much as people with frozen accounts told me. I mean, it means everything to me. I, you know, I, I, have, I wasn't able to pay rent for this month. I wasn't able to pay my bills. I quit my job. I quit my career to go into business for my family and my savings is my, uh, my safety net for doing that, for making such a crazy decision. So it means a lot. We really. The super suck. I, I'm not again. These all seem like good people on it, and it sucks to have this happen. I just, to me, it's so insane to be like, man, this is my, this is my nest egg. This is my savings. This is everything I got. I'm gonna put it with Yada, a company I heard about from a YouTuber. That's crazy to me, and I don't blame them. I don't. I really don't. I don't blame them at all. But it's just, to, it's just like, man. Uh, I think it's just trusting. I think people being too trusting to people on YouTube or, um. I don't know, but, but, you know, give it some thought, dude. Stop. So many things on the internet are telling you that it's free money or this is a good thing or it's a no lose lottery or all this bullshit. Just be careful. No, you can blame them. I, I, in this case, I really don't think you can because, um, especially because how much the company pivoted and also this part where they can't access their money. That's not even Yada's fault based on this, this, this video. Like Yada's not at fault for the Synapse Evolve problem. They're at fault for pivoting into a gambling company. That's different, but they still should be getting their money back. So um, anyway, I, in general, the practice of, you know, if one person was doing this, then it's like, oh, maybe that person's an idiot. But like, there's a lot of people doing this. At the end of the day, uh, the fault is larger than every individual person. Like this is, it's stupid. But I, but I do want to say like, have a little bit of like, awareness because otherwise you're going to get scammed no matter what if you can't see that like this is probably a risk then then even protections can't save you they have no safety net i mean even if that money's not gone it's gone for us for now my wife and i have been saving for our first home if this takes months years to drag out it's going to delay our home i've uh, been saving essentially for three to four years and uh was saving up for a wedding and uh, to buy a home. And, you know, as soon as this stuff happened, um, that was actually the first week that I needed to pay off the deposits for the wedding. So that sucks. Pretty, it hurt me quite a lot. That sucks. Hey, uh, another great video by CoffeeZilla. Guy's been killing it. Guy's been on a, on a tear uh, this whole past couple of years, but especially last year particularly. Uh, another uh, huge respect for the guy. One of my favorite YouTubers. Putting in a ton of work and, and uh, making this stuff digestible and having a human element to it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to call it for there for tonight. Check talk on. What's talk on? Um...
CEO of Synapse responded to Nike must evolve. So maybe it might evolve. I mean, uh, sure, I don't need to read this. It needs to be fixed between Evolve and Synapse. It's not even, that part isn't even Yada's fault, but. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching today's Marketing Monday. I'll be back tomorrow with an earlier stream featuring a Spectacore. We are doing a live in-person Hitman stream before a Spectacore goes back to Canada. Um, and then I'm going to take to the airport. So if you want to watch a IRL, I don't know, shirts or shots or whatever we're going to do. Um, we're going to do Hitman Horse 1v1 in person, which should be fun. He's going to come to my, and actually the loser will get killed. Yeah. The winner will assassinate the loser. It'll be really fun. What time ish? I'm thinking like around 11 Pacific. I'm thinking around 11 AM Pacific to give us time to do it and take him to the airport. Maybe more like 12, but 11 or 12, um, fairly early, probably right after a stand stream and uh, I'll do a bunch of shots and then drive him to the airport. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be great, dude. It'll be really fun. So, uh, EU frogs tune in. I think it'll be a, a blast to do an in-person Hitman event. It was great having dinner with, uh, Lincoln suspect last night. We just drove around, bro. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I'll tell you one thing about Linkus. Okay. Linkus and Spectacor are going to make fun of my driving. I'm just telling you ahead of time. They're going to make fun of my driving because I'm an aggressive breaker. <laughs> They're going to make fun of driving. But I want to give you a fucking uh, pre-warning here, okay? Because I took them to go get donuts at like midnight or whatever, late at night, okay? Maybe 10, 11, I don't know, late at night. And while I'm trying to eat my fucking donut, all Linkus can talk about is his fucking colonoscopy, okay? So if you want to bring that up, Linkus, I've got a whole fucking story here. About your ins <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow. Hope you enjoy. Bye. Thanks, Squeaks, for the raid, by the way. Love Squeaks.